الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يحملون العرش ومن حوله يسبحون بحمد ربهم ويؤمنون به ويستغفرون للذين امنوا ربنا وسعت كل شيء رحمه وعلما فاغفر للذين تابوا واتبعوا سبيلك وقهم عذاب الجحيم ربنا وادخلهم جنات عدن التي وعدتهم ومن صلح من ابائهم وازواجهم وذرياتهم ومن صلح من ابائهم وازواجهم وذرياتهم انك انت العزيز الحكيم وقهم السيئات ومن تق السيئات يوم اذ فقد رحمته وذلك هو الفوز العظيم صدق الله وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم my dear respected brothers and sisters this day the last juma of ramadan on one hand that's a happy occasion that alhamdulillah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala empowered and enable us to perform his ibadat but on the other hand this is a sad situation as well that the blessed month of ramazan is passing by which is the month of rahma the month of baraka the month of maghfira and baraa min an-nar so that's why our reaction to this last friday will be a mixing one happy in one way and sad in in another way as you know respected brothers and sisters prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to make preparation for ramazan since the month of rajab because this is a happy occasion but in the last ashara 
He used to do a takaf in masjid. Thinking of his ummah. Giving a message and lesson to his ummah. To devote themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the month of Makhbira is passing by. Imam Shahrani rahmatullahi alayhi he narrated a hadith. Mane atakaf al ghashr al awakhira min Ramazan. Kana lahu ka hajjain wa umratain. Whosoever will do a takaf of last ten days and night, he will be having a reward equal to two hajj and two umras. Brothers, who got blessed with a takaf anywhere all over the world, and especially in our community, in Islamic Center Northridge, in both masajid, a few brothers are sitting here, a few others are sitting in Tampa. So we are thankful to them. They performed the sunnat al al kifaya on behalf of the whole community. Respected brothers, from the very beginning, there was a misconception that nobody is going to do a takaf from our brothers in Tampa. This misconception came because the Imam of Tampa was calling us that we need someone, nobody is there. Later on we came to know that that community regarding religious practice that is also a generous community. Generosity doesn't mean that you are spending money. You are giving your time. So their generous community also provided with four or five brothers who are making a takeoff in Tampa. Those who are doing the same. Their families. Those who inspired them. And those who help them in this regard, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them. Because as I told you, etikaf is not individual responsibility. That's collective responsibility. So you are doing a favor to me. You are doing a favor to community. That's why we are bound to make a dua for all of them. And same is the case of our brothers here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and their families. And alhamdulillah, almost every night, we have few other brothers that they are doing nafal atikaf. Because nafal atikaf, you can do for one hour and two hours as well. That's a devotion. So somebody is devoting himself for one hour or two hours to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Disconnecting himself from his worldly business and worldly attachment, even from his family and his children, that's a sacrifice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of them, say Ameen. And for that misconception, we are sorry that we said that, oh, nobody is making a tikab there. So that came because of that misconception. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our community in Tampa as well. Say Ameen. Amen. Respected brothers and sisters, Imam Sharani says, وَمَنْ قَرَأَ بَيْنَ الْمَغْرِبِ وَالْعِشَاءَ فَلْيَتَبَوَّأْ مَقْعَدَهُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ In Ramadan, whosoever will recite and pray in between Salat al-Maghrib and Salat al-Isha, he is making his castle there in Jannah and Paradise. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an. Now most of us, we missed the opportunity. So you may not take this hadith literally. But the bottom line is meant there. That Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an. He was in etikaf in Ramadan. 
سم ون کیم ٹو وزٹ ہم ابن عباس رضی اللہ تعالی عن ریڈ ہز فیس ہی آسک ہم مالی اراک کئیبن حزینا یو آر ویری سیڈ اینڈ ویری ٹربلڈ وٹ ہیپن ہی سیڈ ان فلان لہو علی حق مسٹر سو اینڈ سو آئی او ہم منی ہی ہیز گیون می لون اینڈ ٹوڈے از دا ڈیو ڈیٹ ولا اقدر علیہ ہے and i am unable to pay it today number one that was the feeling of madyun that ya ayuhal ladina amanu awfu bil uqud be committed to your tongue fulfill your obligation do things in time if you have given a word to someone you should have thought long long ago i am giving this word i am able to fulfill it if you cannot so do not give a word It will humiliate your personality later on. You would get humiliated in the eyes of people. He is a man who does not have a word. And a man, he is known by two things. Number one, by ghera. Number two, by words. That's the jewelry of human. Ghera. Number two, word. What he said, even though regarding word, one point in our area and subcontinent, he says, کہ جھوٹ بولا ہے تو قائم بھی رہو اس پہ ظفر آدمی کو صاحب کردار ہونا چاہیے یس ہی وینٹ ٹو اندر ایکسٹینٹ ہی سیڈ کہ جھوٹ بولا ہے تو قائم بھی رہو اس پہ ظفر یو ہیو ٹولڈ لائی بٹ ناؤ یو ہیو ٹو بی کمیٹڈ ٹو دیٹ ورڈ بیکاز کمٹمنٹ از مینٹ ایز وی سے بی اسٹرکٹ یور گنس آئی ایم ناٹ گوئنگ ٹو انسپائر یو ٹو ٹیل لائی اینڈ بی کمیٹڈ ٹو نیور ٹیل لائی But actually, the other words are half words of that poem. That is meant ke admi ko sahib kirdar hona chahiye. A man, and especially a Muslim, he must be a man of character. As you know, that the British says that when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. Health is lost, something is lost, but character is lost, everything is lost. So try to be people of character, inshallah. Say inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us with noble character. So that guy, he was feeling very bad. Number two, he was aware of the power of that other guy to whom he owed money. That is a guy, when somebody gives him his word and he does not fulfill, that guy become angry. And his anger, it's after effects, that's terrible. So that's why he was shaking. That number one, I cannot fulfill my word. Number two, the guy when he loses temper, he goes to his utmost. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, even though in this atikaf, the moment you started it, it became wajib on you. It was sunnah. But when you enter to atikaf, now that became wajib on you. You cannot go out from masjid. If you will go, your atikaf is broken and now you must do qaza next year. For this atikaf, Got it? For next year, you cannot do any way take off. You must make the intention of this one which you have broken because you went out of masjid. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, he told that brother, afala ukallim hu fika? Should I not talk to that brother? If Ibn Abbas would have money, he would have given it to him. They take it and give it to him. Later on, you will give me. But it means that he did not have it. So he said, Awala ukallimuhu fika. Should I not talk to him in this regard? That he may give you some more time? Kala. In Ajab. He said, that's up to you if you want. So fakharaja min al-masjid. So he put on his cloak, put on his shoes, went out of masjid. The person concerned, he asked Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an, Ibn Abbas, یا ابن عم رسول اللہ او نسیت ما قد کنتا علیہ you forgot that you are in a thikaf and you came out of masjid قال لا ولیکنی سمیت رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم والعہد به قریب فدمغت عیناہ ابن عباس said but I heard the messenger of Allah سبحانہ وتعالی and he passed away a few days ago 
وَالْعَهْدُ بِهِ قَرِيبٌ He is not that far. A few days ago, Prophet ﷺ passed away. So he said, وَدَمَعَتْ عَيْنَاهُ He broke in tears. Recalled his mind. What a blessing it was. Prophet ﷺ was sitting there in a thikaf and we were sitting with. So, فَدَمَعَتْ عَيْنَاهُ He broke in tears. And then he said, وَهُوَ يَقُولُ Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ مَشَا فِي حَاجَةِ أَخِيهِ وَبَلَغَ مُنْتَهَاهُ كَانَ خَيْرًا لَهُ مِنْ اَتِكَافِ عَشْرِ سِنِينَ Whosoever, he went with someone to fulfill his need and necessity, and he did it in reward that is better than his اتِكَاف for 10 years constantly and continuously. And he said, وَمَنْ اَعْتَكَ فَيَوْمَنْ اِبْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ جعل الله بينه وبين النار صلاص خنادق أبعد ما بين الخافقين رواه البيهقي والتبراني. Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, Whosoever did a takeoff of one day and night only for the sake of Allah, Allah سبحانه وتعالى, He will put three big trenches between him and between the hellfire, and the distance between every two trenches will be. Like the distance between the heaven and the earth. Mean Allah will keep him that far from the hellfire. So anyhow, respected brothers, now those who missed the tikab, they have not missed it yet. Yes, those who are in the tikab, they should not go out. That area of hadith is not meant. The second area of hadith is meant that if you can fulfill the need and necessity of someone and you are giving him time and going with him, so do that. In reward, that is better than a takaf ten times or ten years. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that was case number one. Case number two for today's khutbah is, as you know, that we are approaching Eid al-Fitr. Insha'Allah, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when he came to Medina, he saw the people of Medina. They have their exhibition there in Medina on a specific day. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked them that what's the background of these days you are celebrating your exhibition or something like that. You are enjoying and entertaining. So they said, Yawmani nal'abu fihima min zaman al-jahiliya. These are two days we do celebrate since the time of jahiliya and ignorance. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ أَبْدَ لَهُمَا بِيَوْمَيْنْ عِيدُ الْفِطْرِ وَعِيدُ الْأُصْحَى Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says Now no more the celebration of these two days Allah has given you two other days for your celebration And that is one after Ramadan عِيدُ الْفِطْرِ Number two عِيدُ الْأُصْحَى Are the عِيد of sacrifices Respected brothers and sisters Now what is actually the philosophy of عِيدُ الْفِطْرِ Number one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave you the power to perform His ibadah in the month of Ramadan. You did your job in one way or the other. You have to celebrate it. And to be grateful to Allah, not to violate the rule of Allah. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ashkuru kamin a'maqi qalbi. I do pay tones to you from the depth of my heart that you have given me power in the month of Ramadan. I did siyam and qiyam. I did help a few brothers with iftar or something like that. Whatever good you have done. So you are paying thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that very day. And that's why our celebration on that very day is two rakat salat, which is akadu sunan, according to Imam Malik, Imam Shafi and Ahmad ibn Hanbal. And that is wajib according to Imam Abu Hanifa. As I mentioned time and again, that the term wajib according to three other imams is equal to faraz. And when they put something up then sunnat muakkad and down then faraz. So they used to use a word akad sunan. Extraordinarily highly recommended practice of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa For that very concept, Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, he puts the word wajib. And wajib to him, that is less than faraz, but up then sunnat muakkad. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. So in that very prayer, or with that very prayer, we are paying thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you empowered us. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless you with something good, 
what you will do? Yes, have a light musical concert. That's good. That's a good way. Yes, to pay thanks to Allah. That's what we do. Yes, we are doing the marriage of our sons and daughters. So we do have what? Say music. Pay thanks to Allah. So inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Look, this is the idea. You did something great. Pay thanks to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala with two rakat prayer. You are are you to feel sorry for something? Just pray two rakat. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will remove your grief. Sayyida Aisha, رضي الله تعالى عنها, narrates a hadith. كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر بادر إلى الصلاة. Whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he became upset with some situation. He went, made his wudu, and he prayed two rakat. And he said, "Wajoo alat qurrat aini fi salah." Prayer gives me comfort. Prayer, prayer gives me relief. So you have something good, pray two rakat. You have something otherwise, pray two rakat. The first one is gratefulness. The second one, that's actually a relief. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Number two, an Eid al-Fitr. As far as the case of night of Eid al-Fitr is concerned, in Hadith that is called the Laylat al-Jawais. Laylat al-Jawais mean that when the salary is given and not salary, when the prizes are given and distributed, and that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam sometimes he used to stay on Eid al-Fitr night also in masjid. He was not going after a tikaf straight to his house. He said that I am waiting for my jaza. Yes, so I may not miss it. That is Laylatul Jawais, the night of awards, the night of prizes, the night of bonus. You can call it. That's that extra bonus. As you know, the companies they are giving extra bonus to those who did good. Yes, and someone who did not do anything, he will never have a bonus. Oh, brother, what you are doing here? Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah, we did something. We did fasting. Yes, we did qiyam. We did a few other goods. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala empowered us with. So, inshallah, we are waiting for our awards. We are waiting for our prizes. We are waiting for our bonus. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will not deprive us. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, now Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that at Fajr, at dawn break, the angels of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. They are waiting on every exit and access in the city concerned. And when the people they wake up, so they call upon them, "Ukhruju ila Rabbin Karim, Yatil Jazil." Come out! This is the day. You may not miss it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gives a lot for very little. You will do a little. Allah will give you a lot. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, that's why Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he put on us. To pay sadaqatul fitr, who will be paying sadaqatul fitr? Once again, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahum Allah, they are of the view that every Muslim is bound to pay sadaqatul fitr because they say that sadaqatul fitr is just like expiation, atonement, and kafara. You know what I'm saying? And as you know, that kafara is just like a penalty. Penalty. You do have something or you do not? You have to pay it because that's penalty. That what these three imams said: Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, and Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahmatullahi alaihi. And they refer to a hadith: Sadaqatul Fitr, ala kulli Muslim. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that Sadaqatul Fitr is binding on every Muslim. So they took the hadith literally, and the reason for that they say this is kafara, and everybody has to pay kafara. Got it, but Imam Abu Hanifa says, "Rahimahullah, sadaqatul fitr." Look at the very word that is sadaqah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not say kafaratul fitr; he said sadaqatul fitr. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "La sadaqat illa an zahr ghinan." That there is no any sadaqah binding on someone, but if he is rich. So it means that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in another hadith he made two classes of Muslims. The rich and the poor, and if everybody Abu Hanifa says, "Rahimahullah," if everyone is bound to face the Qatul Fitr, they will pay it to whom? One person cannot be the giver and the taker both. It does not make sense. 
One is giving sadaqa and he is taking sadaqa. So, la sadaqa ta illa an zahri ghinan. And Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the basic concept is mentioned there in the case of zakat. Tu khazu min aghniyaihim wa turaddu ila fuqaraihim may be taken from their rich and given to their poor. So Abu Hanifa rahimahullah says, anyone who owns a nisab, yes, a specific amount, which we have mentioned in this brochure for zakat, so he is bound to pay sadaqatul fitr. Sadaqatul fitr, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ibn Abbas says, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for as a zakat al-fitr, tuhrat al-lissayim, min al-laghwi wal-rafas. Alhamdulillah, we try to our best, all of us, the brothers and sisters, in the month of Ramadan, we try to our best not to speak bad, not to do bad. We tried it. That's what the philosophy of Ramadan and fasting is. But still, we are weak. We are human. Sometime it happens. So that is just like you caused a damage to your fasting. You wounded and injured your fasting. And you know that whenever you get injured, you put a bandage there upon or an ointment. So Ibn Abbas says, رضي الله تعالى عن, Actually, this is a bandage to put on that wound and injury. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Fitr, Tuhuratul Lissaim, Min Al-Laghwi Wal-Rafas, Wa Tawmatul Masakeen. And the other philosophy of Sadaqatul Fitr is, that that is feeding the poor. And that's why, recommended way, if you know any poor Muslims, so just provide him with the money of Sadaqatul Fitr before Eid, so he may arrange some rice, some flour, some cooking oil, some sugar, or dresses for his kids, or shoes for his kids, so they may join us in celebrating Eid. Because respected brothers and sisters, to tell you one thing, if Eid is going on, and you know some family is suffering from such like a situation, and their kids, they do not have nice dress, so they will get broken from their inner side. If we would have money, our parents would have bought us such like things. We would have been celebrating our Eid in such a way. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, once he was going to Musalla of Eid, as you know, that the proper way of Salat Eid is to go in the outskirts of city and to pray Salat Eid all at once somewhere showing your gathering that we are Muslims. Alhamdulillah. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to go in the outskirts of Medina and perform salat Eid. So when he was going, Sayyidina Bilal, as you know, a personal servant of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, giving him company every time. So he was with. So there were some kids, they were playing somewhere, laughing and smiling, having beautiful dresses. But one kid, he was sitting on the ground in dust, having some old type of dress, and he was broken in tears. Prophet ﷺ came to him. He sat with him on the ground. Yes, he patted his cheek. And he said, Malaka ya bunayya, why you are sad? He said, Ya Rasulullah, mata abi wa ummi faqira. My father passed away. My mother is faqira. She is poor. So today, I couldn't eat anything early in the morning. People did make some things like we, the Pakistanis, we are making paratas and halwas. Yes? Yes. But the Arabian brothers, for example, they are making kunafis. Or things like that. Everyone, they have their own culture. Yes? And there is no restriction on culture which is not prohibited by Islam. So you can eat kunafi and you can eat halwa and you can eat parata and you can eat anything halal, which is from your halal earning. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that you have not changed. He said, I don't have it. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Subhanallah, what a man he was. Sallallahu, say with a louder voice, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. With that dirt and that ghubar, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifted him up. up. What, a, what, what a lucky child that was. Sitting in the laps of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought him to the house of Fatima. Razi Allah Ta'ala Anha. He said, Ya Bunayati, O oh my daughter, just give him a shower. Number one, give him a beautiful dress of Hassan or Hussein. It will fit him. 
and number three give him some best type of food number three and number four give him some money also so he may enjoy and he said to Bilal that you should go and tell people I am coming they should wait Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam daddy you can go I will do all that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said no I saw him he was crying now I want to see him when he will be giving me a smile then I will go and I will lead Salat Eid so Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was waiting there he brought him back he joined the group of children and he starts smiling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bilal says he came there his whole khutbah that was regarding the due rights of poor and the due rights of orphans and widows respected brothers and sisters in Islam so anyhow Imam Waqib al Jarrah he is the student of Abu Hanifa and the teacher of Imam Shafi Waqib al Jarrah a great muhaddis a great faqih he says that here is Shahri Ramazan Kasiddat is Sahvil is Salah that Sadaqatul Fitr for Ramazan is just like Sajda is Sahwa for our prayer we remake it or we put a bandage of Sajda is Sahwa when we cause any uh, uh, mean wound to our prayer by missing a wajib forgetfully so we make a sajda sawa we have done lot of mistakes in the month of ramazan so sadaqatul fitr that is actually a bandage and ointment to that wound and that injury and respected brothers and sisters in islam uh, how much it will be in a hadith which is narrated by abdullah ibn abbas prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says nisfu sa'in min qamhin wa sa'in min shagir aw tamar aw zabib because at that time the food of arabian people in peninsula that was these four things number one raisin number two dates number three wheat number four barley so barley dates and raisin these were found there in peninsula so prophet sallallahu put it one soil but wheat was not grown there at that time prophet sallallahu put it nisfu sa'in half sa'in this hadith has been taken into consideration by Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi but another riwayah of Abdullah ibn Salaba radiyallahu ta'ala an that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says sa'um min sha'irin aw hintatin aw zabibin aw tamar one sa'a of wheat barley raisin or date now how we will decide what type we should go even though you know that I am a very strict Hanafi very strict but we are looking at society that our society is not the society of Hanafis only we have our brothers from Shafiti Maslak we have our brothers and sisters from Hanabilas from Malikites and so and so on so that's why we are going for Jumhur and we give our fatwa based on the mazhab of Jumhur and as you know that most of the year we do eat things made of uh, wheat flour not a barley flour most of the year we are not eating raisin we are not eating uh, dates most of the year what we do eat yes wheat flour in one way or the other so that's why abu hanifa says rahimahullah wa yutaqawwam bi ghalib quut al balad that what the people in an area they are eating most of the year it would be evaluated on the basis of that kind so we are eating wheat flour that's why we found out that swag is equal to that much in kilogram and it will be seven plus pennies but that is very difficult that we say that seven and seventeen pennies where from you will find the pennies so that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ تَطَوَّعَ خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرُ اللَّهِ whosoever will do more that is better for him so we put it eight dollars per person a person is bound to pay his own yes number two the sadaqatul fitr of his kids and families and even the sadaqatul fitr at that time when the slavery was there so a slave was considered a member of family prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says wa addu an ibadikum wa imayikum and pay sadaqatul fitr from your slaves as well so respected brothers and sisters if you can do it to send it to your own country for your own poor and masakin that is much more appreciated 
that is my nature and I think that's my nature only. Yes, otherwise people will be saying that give it to us, we will distribute it. My case is other way around. I say don't give it to any institution, don't give it to any masjid. Yes, why you do not do on your own? Yes, and you do not know that people in your own area, they are dying of hunger. They do not have dresses. They do not have shoes in their feet. Their kids are without shoes and dress. So you should send it there if you can. If not, so our boxes are there under the doctrine of necessity. Because we are non-profit organization. We are not charity organization. We, the masajid, we are non-profit organization. We are not charity organization. And as you know, that there is only the fatwa of Imam Qasani that in needs and necessities, you can spend the zakat or sadaqatul fitr money in masajid as well, in the salaries, in constructions, in utilities. We say no. Imam Qasani is malikul ulama. We call him what? The king of fuqaha. But sometimes you have to oppose the king as well. We say that, oh Imam Qasani, with due respect to you, Ya Subhan, and with due respect to your famous book, Badaya Ghusanaya, in Islamic laws and rules, but we will be going for four fuqaha, Abu Hanifa, Malik, Shafi, and Ahmad, Rahimahumullah, that is must for zakat and sadaqat wajibah to give it to the poor and to the needy.